Hello everyone, this is Japa with your days and my name is Bimbo and this is my beautiful wife. Hello everyone, my name is Wandi. Yes, so at the beginning of our channel, we promised that uh, we'll be sharing our experiences, the reason why we decided to relocate or jump back to Portugal. So yeah, uh, in 2017, I started my PhD program at the University of Lagos, but after about three years, there was no significant improvement. And uh, one day I called my wife, I said, what do you see about the idea of us relocating or Japahin, if they said a word like that to other country. And uh, she said, well, yeah, no problem. It's a, it's a good one. So, I mean, it was literally like a go ahead. So since then, I started making movement, started applying to other universities in Europe, Canada, USA, UK, particularly looking for scholarship. At some point, uh, the scholarship was not forthcoming. So I decided to strategize and look for a low tuition school fees country and then um uh, portugal was among the options that we saw online austria germany was among the options so we made some application then portugal university of mio that i'm currently doing my phd gave me the admission first then i tried to make some movement ask um uh, the international student office to connect me to nigerians that are currently in that school to so make an informed decisions and get accurate information so yeah i asked them the first thing i asked them is please are there jobs in portugal because i know that uh, portugal is a portuguese speaking country so if somebody that is coming from an english speaking country wants to go into that country you have to do your research very well so they told me there are jobs for english speakers in the country yeah so and then uh, at that period portugal was rated as the third most peaceful country to live in which also influenced some of our uh, i mean which also uh, mark our checkbox that okay yeah it's a very good country to live in peaceful country to live in so among other informations that uh, were very essential to us at that period so when i was living uh portugal system uh, does not run like the UK system where you can go in with your family. So I had I have to go in first, have a lay of the land before I can invite my family in. Where the information was not very well taken, but we decided to make or do this together, and yeah, she agreed to it. So I told them, I promised them, I said, see, in six months I'm going to try my best to bring you people in. And then when I came into the country, the people that uh, I met that were assisting me to integrate into the country, all of them were single guys. So which means no, not one of them have passed through the process that I want to pass through or that are open to pass through the process that uh, I want to pass through any moment from now. So which means they don't have the necessary information that I needed to be able to fulfill the six month promise that I made to my family. So, yeah, so this caused a whole lot of uh, information gaps and then what was supposed to uh, not be more than six months ended up taking one year and about 10 to 11 months. So this period was a whole lot of emotional torture, uh, emotional, um, uh, 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 will I say, torment for the both of us because uh, we were literally on the phone 24 hours talking, what are you doing? I mean, it was... It was a, a whole lot and um, I eventually, um, after about one year and uh, 10 to 11 months, I was able to get the family unification letter, did all the processing and I was eventually able to bring them in. And I believe my wife will have some one or two information or experiences to share from her side. Okay, so as my husband has rightly said, I'm just going to share my own um, experience on how it was for me back in Nigeria when he left. Because when he left, we were newlyweds, and at that point, I gave birth. So I had a child, I had a toddler that I was taking care of. And uh, considering the fact that he was not with me, it was a whole lot of over overwhelming emotions, roller coaster of emotions, having to do with the child all by myself, being a newlywed, having your family not being together, so um, it was just too much. There were times where I would be in the kitchen trying to cook and then I forget the process to what I even want to make in the kitchen. This is just to tell you how it was for me. 
There were times where people call me and ask me, how am I? How am I coping? Uh, they understand I just got married. Uh, I hope I'm not missing my husband. I'm like, really? I just got married. What kind of question would be asking me if I'm not missing? But for goodness sake, I miss him. Like, we just got married. I have a child. Why would you ask me if hope I'm not missing my husband? Like, ah, really? So I had to, like, literally block some people from asking me those questions because it was coming too often. Uh, during that period, I had to try different routes because I noticed that it was taking so much time to meet him. And instead of waiting for the appointment date there in Portugal, we had to try to get a visiting visa uh, in Portugal. So we went to the Portuguese embassy. And when I got to the Portuguese embassy, we were denied, just by the fact that we had all our documents complete, right? Uh, we were told that it was COVID-19 period, and they were not allowing people coming to the country. And it was understandable because, I mean, no country will want somebody from outside the country to bring in COVID. So I understood. So we had to try other routes. I tried other, other EU countries. I went to Spain to try there to ask to um to ask to grant me uh, a tourist visa i got there filled the form paid the fee everything and the day i was supposed to get my visa i think a day before my husband was already telling me okay pack this don't pack this pack this don't pack this and that morning i got a call that um the dispatch rider was downstairs and i got downstairs to pick up the the passport and then at the stairs, I had not even gotten into the house, at the stairs where I was, I opened the passport and it was empty, right? I was shocked because at that point, I felt, okay, I tried the first time, at least the second time should work. But at that point when I saw the empty, my passport was empty, my expectations were caught for the second time. And I just literally, literally told myself that I wasn't going to try again. I told myself, I said, okay, you know what, I'm just going to tell you. Whenever you are ready to finish your PhD, do your PhD and come back. I'm no longer trying this again because it was too much torture for me to try the first time. It was not successful. Trying the second time was also not successful. And I couldn't go again with it. I couldn't go over it again for the third time. So I made up my mind at that point on the staircase. I wasn't going to try the, second, the third time. Um, so um, after we, had, we, 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 we came back and had to be strategized. Um, because, you know, when you try plan A, plan A is not working, you go for plan B, plan B doesn't work, at least try something else. And so um, we, he now had to get some valid information about how to bring in your family. But the whole of this took so long. And um, one thing I just want to reassure you um, about today is that if I'm able to do it, you'll be able to do it. I wouldn't tell you that it's an easy process. Trust me, it is not easy. It was not easy for me, and to be honest, it will not be easy for you. I'm not going to be here, and my just mind was with you. I'm going to tell you the way it is. It is not easy, but if you have your partner, always be strategizing, always communicating. I'm sure you guys will be fine. Um, I'm just grateful that the whole of that process ended, right? And we are here now, so that's it, basically. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, so um, as I said, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a very easy time for us. Uh, I mean, there were days I will, I will be speaking with my daughter and she'll be like, ah, daddy, come out of the phone and let's play. And I mean, I will be moody throughout the day because it was, it was I thought I was strong, but man, <laughs> Uh, every strong man has their weak point too, yeah. So, yeah, so that process actually uh, made me to pass through a whole lot of um, uh, information, uh, information patching in terms of uh, covering some of the gap that affected us. And uh, uh, to the glory of God, we've assisted a host of other families come in to Portugal without stress some within six months some in less than a year we've assisted them to come in because some of the things that we have passed through through visiting visas family unifications we've been able to give accurate information to other families and other people that want to bring in their family so of course in my in our subsequent videos uh, we try to be sharing some tips and informations or strategies to or uh, regarding family reunifications, trying it with other countries, other EU countries, among other information that are very, very essential. So, of course, stick to our channel so that by the time we drop these informations weekly, you will be the first to get notifications, like our social media channels, and of course, follow us back. So, 
So we come your way next time with other information on so family reunification and other opportunities on how you can jack back to Portugal. Stay tuned to our channel. Like and subscribe. Bye-bye. Love you all. Bye-bye.